You know, the only reason I'm just looking at you and like this and smiling is because you're all looking at each other and you're smiling and you're talking and happy to see each other and I just didn't want to stop you. So I'm so glad to see you all this morning. I'm Joel Miller. I'm the interim minister here at the Morristown Unitarian Universalist Fellowship. So great to welcome this um, warm energy and loving community here this morning. Some of us are also online and we're glad you're here and watching us talking about dreams today, you know, there are really kind of two dreams that, I'm, that we're thinking about. The one is the more obvious one, that dream that's now a reality, that big, beautiful um, addition with the, the, the Chu family hall and the, the, the low compassion courtyard and the Wilson Erhain um, ga welcome gallery, and I'm trying to get those names right. Um, and I think there's a firm classroom, is that right? So, Morgan Taller, firm owl classroom. Morgan Taller, firm owl classroom. I'm partial to owl. There's another kind of dream, too, that we have, but we talk less about in our culture these days, which are the dreams we have when we sleep. Sometimes we worry most, you know, we kind of think, ah, dreams, you know, it's just as, the, as Scrooge says in the... Uh, um, uh, night before Christmas. Oh, it's dreams. They're just undigested bits of, of mustard and, and potatoes. And that's not my experience with those dreams that we have at night. Dreams are, those dreams of sleeping are, come to, come to me with the possibility of questions. It took me a while to understand that. I was, I joined a dream group. We were talking about our dreams. This was in the congregation where I'd grown up and I was a young adult at this point and I was in the jewelry business and doing really well. But I was wondering, you know, there had to be something more. It felt like there had to be, I, I was still missing something. And then I had a nightmare. And you know it's a nightmare because usually you wake up from it really suddenly and you go, oh my God. And this is one of those dreams where I, I went in and, and, and sat down in my living room and, and then came and sat down right across from me was a jeweler who was a skeleton at the same time. And the skeleton looked at me, shook, shook, it was a he in my dream, makes sense because usually everything in the dream is you in some form or another. It shook his head and then went, to, went to, to come after me, and then I woke up from the dream like, oh my God, the skeleton was gonna kill me. <laughs> and then in the dream group, when they asked me, well, what was the skeleton trying to say? And then I realized there was the question, if you stay a jeweler, you'll be like me. Why, right? I was like, oh my gosh. Well, I was trying to ignore the call to ministry, like. I was gonna, I'm gonna do what? I'm gonna move where? Here I am. I have no regrets and I'm grateful for the dream, but it was a pretty shocking dream at the moment. I had lots of fun dreams too, which I'll share some later, but I'm so glad you're here as we share about the dreams of sleep, which can be ornery and surprising, and the dreams of waking, which, if they're done in love, do amazing things. Good morning and welcome. Welcome, new friends and old, and happy St. Patrick's Day, Aaron Gobra. Welcome to our shared journey of the spirit. We're grateful that you're with us this morning. I'm Lori Cross, this morning's worship associate, and I'm so pleased to welcome you to this morning's service, both in person and online. 
We are a spiritual community that appreciates the importance of the practice of appreciation and acceptance. We look for ways to empower each other in our spiritual growth, supporting each other through our journeys of birth, childhood, youth, and adulthood. Being in Sunday worship together is one way that we learn who we are together and as individuals. Worship is, for us, a time when we share in the spiritual practice of listening. In this time of worship, as we are all always learning to listen, we understand that if you have a need to leave for a conversation or to help someone with a need, if you are a person who gets overwhelmed by sound stimuli, our parlor is a very quiet room where you can listen and watch the service. If you need to talk, you can watch and listen from our library. If children, youth, and their families have questions about our religious education programming, Nick Walwork is our director of religious education. You can find out more about our choir from our music director, Michael Rosen. Our AV director in the back is Alex West, and our congregational administrator is Katie Julik. She is here most weekdays, and she's happy to get your emails. And as he said, Reverend Joel Miller is our interim minister. We have many announcements in the orders of service, both online and in paper, here are a couple that I would like to highlight. Everyone's welcome to game day. Today at two, in the dining room. Today, lots of games. Should be fun. Before that, at 12.30, the Board of Trustees update meeting will include reports and feedback on our plans for finances, congregational communications, and for religious education programming. The board is responding to requests for information and questions. A light lunch will be available before the informational meeting. The link to the Zoom meeting is in the online order of service and in the Sunday update that was sent out this morning. And a last minute construction announcement. The lower playground, the stepping stones, the climbing web, the labyrinth, they are fenced off and not available this weekend. A drainage pipe is being installed. We expect the trench will be inspected and backfilled next week. The toddler play area remains available this weekend. in this morning's affirmation. Love is the spirit of this fellowship, and service is its law. This is our great covenant, to dwell together in peace, to seek the truth in love, and to help one another. Good morning, everybody. Um, this song, uh, in our library or other Unitarian screen libraries did not exist on the screen, so I think it is new. Um, so the music is not up there, uh, but I will, for everyone here, and especially those at home, I will play the whole tune once through. And those are here can also, of course, look at your hymnal. Uh, but it is a beautiful song, and Tim and I will do our usual thing. Please stand if you'd like.
right. I'd like to invite any kids or young at heart up there. If you guys are in the library, come on in. I know Owl got out late, so they're still eating their snack. Hopefully not in the library. I know. They were having a lot of chatting. So come on up. Let's see them. Okay, give me a little space. Okay, 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 okay. Okay. So, what did Reverend Joel say we were going to talk about today? Who was in here at the start of the service and was paying attention? Anyone? Who was in here at the start of the service? We'll start with that. None of us are paying attention. It's fine. Tape the sign for what? Okay, you weren't in. Okay. So we are going to talk about, uh, adults, what are we uh, talking about today? Dreams. dreams. How many of you have had a dream before? Okay. You want to tell me about it? It seems like you do. What do you want to tell me about, Charlotte? Um, one dream, it was like, um, I was just like, um, I was just like, 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 A dream within a dream. Very meta. Dream. Um, I woke it's up in a deception. And my next dream um, um, was my parents. Okay. Like my grandma, um, mm-hmm. my grandma, and my mom. Okay. They were not responding to me. I was like oh. yelling at them, kicking them, and they would not. They were not responding to you. Okay, okay. They would not respond to me. Now, when Reverend Joel was telling his story about his dream, he had a dream where he was a skeleton, and if you have your bingo boards, uh, he, the skeleton was also a jeweler, so you can check that uh, check off there. Um, and uh, it was telling him maybe he shouldn't be a jeweler anymore. That's what he decided. What do you think your dream was telling you? I have no idea. You have no idea? <laughs> maybe you were worried that sometimes your mom and dad and your grandma don't re- listen to you sometimes? Maybe. I don't know. We don't need to get into it. You don't have to answer that. <laughs> Sorry, I don't want to, we don't need to have a therapy session in front of all these people. What am I doing? Um, I'll tell you, I'm going to tell, I'm going to tell a, a, a story about Charlotte um, because, uh, and I asked her if I could. And um, Charlotte used to have bad dreams about airplanes. And we couldn't figure out why. She had gone on an airplane, but it was a lovely trip. And appara- I didn't go on it with her. Uh, she went with her mom and her grandparents. And they, she watched videos on the little screen on the thing. And I, we don't know why she was so afraid of airplanes. And so she would, with every, you know, like once a week, come into our bed. And when she was little. This wasn't like last week. Uh, <laughs> and uh, she, um, we finally realized that she had watched, I had made her watch one of my favorite Christmas movies. Home Alone 2, Lost in New York, in which the main character, Kevin McAllister, gets lost on an airplane. He goes on the wrong airplane. And so what Charlotte, we we think, was so worried that she would lose her family on an airplane. And it was really sad for her. Now, those are all both bad and scary dreams. Does anyone have any good dreams? I don't want to end this on a bummer. Does anyone have any good dreams? Oh, tell me, Alice. A giant cake of sushi. That would be probably the best thing for you. For some people, that might be a terrible dream, but for Alice, that is a very exciting dream. And so, when we have these dreams, do we, we get scared or we get excited? And sometimes it's worth thinking about what it is, right? So for Alice, it might be the excitement of sushi. Because it is a lot. For Charlotte, it might have been the fear of not being heard. Mm-hmm. What is um that? Um, what is um? Oh yeah. So I was the queen of England. Oh okay. <laughs> that was just a dream. No, that's a bummer. It is kind of disappointing when we wake up from these good dreams, and it, it's not real. But it's also very good when we wake up from these bad dreams, and that, that also is not real. Sometimes we crawl into bed with our moms and dads, even though they don't want a third person in bed with them. Alice. <laughs> um, right? But those dreams sometimes tell us about what we're thinking about. So next time you have a dream, after you wake up, finally wake up and figure out, it, f- figure out that, we, that it's not real, think about 
what it is that dream's trying to tell you. Because that's your, that's your self, your subconscious, telling, trying to tell you something. All right? That make sense? About a good sushi or scary airplanes or being the queen of England. Yeah? No, we're done. Thank you, Charlotte. All right. Let's go sit back down with our families, and uh, Reverend Joel tells even more about dreams. And if you want to tell me about dreams, we can talk afterwards, okay? I want to hear all your dreams. This is the time in the service when we uh, share milestones, passages, gratitudes, milestones, those markers that used to be along the roadway to tell us when we'd gone a mile and now a word that reminds us that there are moments in our lives that we look for that are times of transition, passages when a big transition happens in life, and gratitudes because where else to start spiritually but with what brings us joy, what brings us deep connection with one another. Um, a, a milestone this morning, um, just this week, um, we mark four years of, uh, four years ago that the pandemic arrived. Now, not so much a pandemic, maybe an endemic. It's hard to know what to call it. Our thoughts, our prayers for Gaza and Israel, 35,000 people in Gaza, dead and many starving. May peace come to the people of Israel and Gaza soon. And for the people of Ukraine and Russia who continue to be in wars, suffering the tyranny of authoritarianism, may the people in Russia find a way to freedom. Um, from uh, Mary Louise McGinnis, Tom McGinnis is in hospice care. He's at his daughter Amor's residence in Tom's River. Cards may be sent. Please keep Tom and his family in your thoughts and prayers. Amor Taylor's address is 33 Granada Street, Tom's River, 08757. And I have the address here if you need it. George Hayes says, thank you for your love and support during my long illness. It warms me and Beverly's heart. Thank you. And Don Marks, as a gratitude, Tuesday will be my 52nd anniversary. Wow. And much love to, to Don and Diane. Congratulations. Um, there's an anonymous um, gratitude for the love of family and friends. And um, from Brooke Donaldson, for the person who planted the pansies. Thank you. This beautiful place, these beautiful faces, the beauty of our aspirations together, and the challenges that we rise to and the deep commitment we have to making a home for the spirit and making ourselves collectively a beacon for hope and for love. All of this makes this a holy place of memory, a place that has formed us and continues to form us and forms the newest of us. And holy is this place of dreaming we imagine places over the rainbow, a place perhaps where all children will be wanted and all people are fed, where our differences are reasons to celebrate. And people of all ages come to the table as one. Holy are these places of change, struggle, even pain places where the rivers of our lives run fast and white and we hold on, we grow. Holy are these places. 
holy are the places of connection. This place of connection where we risk ourselves with one another. Hands touch hands. Souls reach out to souls. Minds touch minds. And in growing awareness, we are changed and changing. Holy is this place of becoming, a place of aspiration, where life and love and world, all woven together, lead to a future we cannot seem even imagine, but for which we give thanks because of what we can and must become. This is holy ground, a holy place for all that we bring and all that is possible here. And for this whole making holiness, we give thanks. Amen, so be it, blessed be. I wanted to ask real quick that the first song. Raise your hand if you did know that tune. Okay, yeah, no, you certainly didn't sing it like a congregation didn't know it. Okay, I just wanted to figure it out. It was very good. Because many of you may have relative or even perfect pitch. You should come talk to me. But um, <laughs> yeah, it's very nice how you picked up. You guys are a very good, very good singing congregation. But um, um, this song uh, we did for the uh, neurodiversity service uh, recently, but uh, uh, we, when we were planning, we, Joel and I, we wanted to do it again because uh, it does explicitly mention dreams in the second verse. Come and dream a dream with me, come and dream a dream with me, that I might know your mind, which is exactly what we're doing. And this sort of wonderful poetic ending, which we're all a little re- relieved about, and I'll bring a song of love and a rose in the winter time because it is indeed, although it doesn't feel like it, the last Sunday of winter. So I'm very excited to send winter out with this into the spring. <laughs> so please stand if you'd like.
For those of you who know me, I'm not usually nervous. I am this morning. This morning will be personal. And I'm going, I got my notes approved by Reverend Joel. I'm going to veer off for about 30 seconds. When I was about 10, well, I was raised Lutheran, which is a Protestant denomination. When I was about 10, I had a dream I will never forget. My whole neighborhood was rubble, a war zone. And there I am being carried down the street. And I knew who was carrying me. It was Jesus. And I'm sitting there this morning thinking, OK, how is that related to all this? It's very much related. If I could pick one word that I learned in my youth, it would be reconciliation. So on that note, the word dream, it conjures up John Lennon's song, right? No countries, no war, no possessions. You may say I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. He was a collective dreamer, offering us a vision meant to be shared. We all dream, romance, career, home, adventure, but collective dreaming, dreaming of the rule of law, democracy, freedom, equality, peace, fellowship. That's where the heavy lifting is needed and where collective dreaming works. Reverend Joel will point us toward the Reverend Jeremy Taylor, who suggested dreams, they enable us to experience awe of our mysterious inner wisdom. That dreams, they're a spiritual window for each of us to divine consciousness, to our longing individually and collectively for meaning even greater the nonviolent social change, that social justice actually it only reflects an even deeper human value, that longing for transcendent meaning. For me, transcendence evokes the concept of connection to our own inner wisdom, to divine energy, to the cosmos, to one another as we manifest that energy. Transcending difference, celebrating, as Reverend Joel said earlier, difference in favor of respect and reverence for and connection to what's cosmic, divine, universal in each of us. These are divisive times, more so this year with the coming presidential election. Those who dream of white, cisgendered Christian families, and those who dream of a rainbow, of free, caring partnerships. Some threaten violence. Others envision escape to other countries. How can we lead the way to transcending difference, to finding and building on common ground? I don't think Joe Biden was the first president who, when he took the oath of office, he vowed to represent, consider, help, not just the ones who voted for them. He vowed to listen and help everyone, transcending differences, recognizing that ethical imperative. My new neighbor in Chatham is a Chinese national here because his daughter is enrolled in a private American boarding school. As we sat outside on a recent afternoon, he listened to me complain about Trump and then looked square at me and said, Lori, I'm jealous of you, that you can sit here and openly say what you think. I cannot do that at home. That freedom that we have here, it's a testament 
to the power of collective dreaming. We here, we're a microcosm of the larger community with differing point of views. Here we go. Me. I'm going to follow Joel's directions. I'm going to take risk. I was one who voted against the addition. Most people I spoke to here told me they also voted against the addition. But here we are, differing points of view, together in this place. I want to tell you a story. Yes. Once upon a time, there was a church right in the center square of a small town. The people of that church, they wanted to build a new church. The president of that church council also the lead soloist in their choir, hired and paid a structural engineer to evaluate the old church building. The inspector came back and said the building was sound. It'll still be here in 50 years, he promised. The council president was voted down anyways. They built the church, and he left forever never looked back. That old church, still standing, over 50 years later. That guy, he was my dad. My husband's right back there. You ask him how much we're alike. Every time we went to see him, his Bible was at his table, full of his notes, between him and God. Nobody else anymore. Every time I returned to my hometown, let me see if I can find it. Yep. Look closely. There on Main Street, facing the little village park, is my old church, still standing, now a group therapy practice for children and families. The day I took this picture, Mike and I went in. There used to be at the upper <coughs> sides of the sanctuary, small rooms where we met for Sunday school. They're still there. The therapists use them as their own offices. I voted against this addition, reasoning we, we could spend the money in so many more direct ways to help the needy. I want you to know it has taken effort. I, I have felt torn, disappointed. You've seen me come and go, here and not. But I aspire to cultivate a different position than my dad. I want to cultivate trust that you, in charge of the new structure, you'll honor those of us who want our resources inve invested directly in community good, that you'll stay mindful of our priorities as well as your own, that each of us trust and respect the other's dream for us and pledge to help realize it. And I realized this morning for you to hear my dream, I have to stay. I have to talk. Transcending difference in favor of connection to one another here, to other humans, living beings out there. You've helped me to cultivate trust in our interactions with one another. We show each other that each of us matters when you say hello, when you give me a hug. I'm here right now because you're helping me to trust this process and honor my longing 
to transcend our differences in reconciliation to build on common ground. One of the most worthy projects I've ever been privileged to support was called the High High Project at my former fellowship in Huntington, New York, Long Island. High High, it stands for Huntington Interfaith Homeless Initiative. Almost three dozen different religious organizations throughout the township, they donate one night a week throughout the winter months, their space so that homeless in the community, picked up by a van, brought to that space, come to a place for a hot meal and a warm, safe place to sleep that night. I hope this new space becomes a center, a focal point of ideas and actions to make all lives better, transcending difference toward connection. That's my collective dream. And I'm so grateful that you give me this time, this space, to tell you how I feel and what I think, showing me that I matter, reinforcing my belief that we can transcend differences and find an even deeper connection. Thank you. Our offering today is split 50-50 with um, Family Promise, mobilizing community resources and people to end the crisis of homelessness and housing instability. And so grateful our choir will uh, perform for our, make this offering for our offering. So as uh, you can see today's theme hearing from Joel, Lori, and Nick is dreaming, but in the evolution of that more specifically, not just dreaming when we're sleeping, but the dreams we have and hopes and the universal things that unite peace and progression that we want through dreaming. Um, and this song is about exactly that. It's, it keeps referring to one thing, one something that unites us. I'll read the first stanza. The composer wrote the text and the music. There is but one world. There is but one sun to shine. There is but one home for us all. There is but one dream. There is but one joy to find. There is but one heart we bring. Yet when we feel alone, when it seems that no one cares, there is but one song that we share. Oh, oh, oh. 
think I was about nine or ten. I can't quite remember exactly how old I was. I remember the dream really vividly. It was a, one of those really, really long dreams. It would take forever to actually tell you the dream. Just let me say it was a journey, and it was, it was almost like a hero's journey, and I'm wandering through all kinds of experiences and dramas, and finally I'm just cresting the hill toward my final destination to, to see revealed the goal of my dream, and my mom's voice breaks into my, my consciousness. She said, good morning, Joel, time to wake up. <laughs> Mom! <laughs> At the time, I thought, I've missed what the dream was going to tell me. But I've learned since then that dreams are a little ornery. The dream timed itself. It's exactly what was supposed to happen at that moment. My mom waking me up for the day and all that life has to offer. Dreams are remembered in ancient stories in the Bible. In Genesis, the first book of the Bible, Joseph is betrayed into slavery by his brothers. Shocking story. But then Joseph works his way up into the Pharaohs, the king of Egypt, the Pharaoh's second command. And this amazing rise in his social status happens because he interprets a dream of the Pharaoh, realizing that a, a, a drought is coming and there's going to be famine. And by helping everyone understand that dream, Joseph saved both the people of Egypt and his people, the Israelites, from that famine and the starvation that could have resulted. Even now in Islam, dreams, the dreams of sleep, remain significant features of major life transitions. A dreamer can have a dream that validates a call to become a mystic, to settle a dispute, or to pursue a line of work. In Islam, the most precious and blessed of dreams is a dream of God. Among the many first peoples in North America, Indian dreams bring extremely important meanings. Sometimes even in some cultures, Indian nation cultures, there's, in a dream, there's a new name for a young person becoming an adult. The first people of Australia they see dreams as something, it's not just that everything dreams, but that we're, we're in a process of dreaming itself. It's a reality, they say, greater than the ones we measure with clocks. They call it Muramura mura, or Chukur or Bamum or Altiranga. It means the dream time. Some scientists say dreams don't have any meaning. Our sleeping brains are just processing short-term memories into long-term memories. Like Scrooge said, undigested bits of beef, a blot of mustard, a fragment of an underdone potato. Some, some days, I admit, I'm having dreams where that's exactly the case. I ate too much too late at night. But there's dream work. I have a dream journal that I keep. The best way to remember dreams is to have a journal and at night look at it and say, if I have a dream, I want to remember it and write it down. And that's how to remember dreams, actually. And I share with friends my dreams and we discover together important meaning in the dreams we've had. Just, so just saying, science doesn't dismiss great novels because novels are fiction. It's wouldn't be good science, nor is it good science to dismiss a universal human experience that dreams call us to something more, ask us interesting and complicated and sometimes annoying questions. Just because science hasn't figured that out yet doesn't mean it's not real. So Jeremy Taylor, I learned, as Laurie mentioned, Jeremy Taylor was this Unitarian Universalist minister, grew up Unitarian Universalist in Buffalo, New York. He worked with dreams for over 60 years. My favorite book on dreaming is the one he wrote titled, When People Fly and Water Runs Uphill. I got to study dreams a little bit with Jeremy Taylor when I was studying for ministry. And he explained every time we met, all dreams come in the service of health and wholeness. All dreams. 
even the nightmares, especially the nightmares. And maybe that sounds strange, but you know, I've been in dream groups and, and seen that figure actually of a skeleton appear in other people's dreams as well as the one in my own dream that I mentioned early, at the beginning of the service. And those nightmares are trying to get our attention to say something that we've been trying to avoid in our own head. Pay attention to this because life is awaiting you. But will you meet life and join it and connect with it? Dreams come from our own unconscious minds. And Taylor would say the dreamer is the one who can interpret a dream. Others of us can offer our own suggestions. He would often say, if you want to help someone say, well, if that were my dream, it would say to me. But ultimately, only the dreamer knows and understands what the dream is asking. And just because I mentioned science, Albert Einstein, he told about a dream once that gave him his life's work his idea of special relativity and so many other things that, uh, um, uh, theories and uh, uh, principles of physics that he came up with. He had the dream when he was a teenager. He was flunking math. His family said, you're not doing so great. Albert, become a plumber. <laughs> now, just as a side note, some plumbers I know are geniuses, and I'm really grateful for them. Um, so I, why a plumber? I don't know. I'm, my, some great plumbers. In the dream, he said, he was sledding with friends at night. They'd climb the hill, go down the hill. They were having a great time. At one point, they started going so fast down the hill, faster and faster. He realized they were approaching the speed of light, and the stars then were refracted into colors he'd never seen or even knew existed before. And he realized in the moment of that dream, he was looking at the most important meaning in his life. Einstein would say later, I knew I had to understand that dream. My entire career has been a meditation on that dream. Taylor wrote that all dreams come in the service of health and wholeness. These narratives, these stories in our unconscious mind with symbols, and some of the symbols are universal, it seems, even though that's a bit of a heretical thing to say these days. But Taylor would say in response, there's truth in every method of interpreting a dream. Yes, sure, some of the dreams are about the blot of mustard and the undigested potato, but dreams have meaning as as uh, Freudians would have said, what about that erotic energy that dwells in everything? Or the Jungian sense that our lives are a journey towards healthy individuation and communion with our typical energies. Or an Adlerian view that our psyches are a will to greater personal power and con competence. He'd say all of that, yes and more. It's easy these days and times of smartphones and artificial intelligence and computers so precisely programmed. Dreams and their messiness seem kind of old fashioned. They're not neat and they're not tidy. Dreams, when we have them, if we listen to them, they will disturb a tidy life. They will ask us questions we had been trying to ignore. In my dreams and my nightmares, the hardest parts have been the really awkward questions they want me to ask of myself. All dreams come in the service of health and wholeness. And dreams that a community builds together. Dreams that a community struggles to build and to make real in the world and then to live through. It's hard work. But we do this in service of health and wholeness of the world. All of this, an opportunity for personal growth, spiritual transformation, and a chance to make the world a better place. 
For Taylor, this was the life within us reaching out to the life that surrounds us. Our dreams, both the dreams of sleep and the dreams of our waking time, are our opportunities to give ourselves to the journey of life together and to discover new ways to make the world a better place and to reach our aspirations for peace and love for all. We're gonna sing now. Where my free spirit onward leads. It's number 324 and we chose some uh, different kinds of music today. <laughs> is this the moment in the dream when I'm wondering where Michael is? <laughs> yeah, he might have had he might have had something come up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 324. He's got it open to the right page. Let's stand in body and spirit. Okay. I'll play it through one. Ah, here he comes. We're, she's going to get us started, and then Michael can pick up. <laughs> Thank you, Beth. Uh, let's do it one more time. It was great. And actually, now that you've heard it, because I didn't want to play, how many of you know that one? Okay, that's okay. Because I was quite surprised. It was totally coincidental. Everything I've done, I mean, since before Christmas has, has had slides for, and I always check, and I didn't this week, and there ended up being two that did not. So um, 
that is borderline, it's, I'm going to say, almost criminal. This is an astounding hymn, and that's why I'm absolutely going to play it. And um, it's one of the greatest hymns. Ever. I know Laurie knows it. This is as old school Protestant classic. This is you got the, yeah. more than as much as a Mighty Fortress is Our God. It's got 95 theses all over it. This is um, uh, by, uh, harmonized by Ray Fawn Williams, who is sort of to music what I would say Ralph Waldo Emerson is to that early crossover of Unitarian. So, yeah, he was a frustrated agnostic as best, but being such a high Anglican British, you know, man, he said all the text to the credo, but um, I know I like to do my thing where I reharmonize, but there's two composers I never touch. That the first one is Johann Sebastian Bach, and this being Rafe Fawn Williams, the other being him, yes. <laughs> Spelled Ralph Fawn Williams, but he's British, so he'd say Rafe Fawn Williams, and you'll hear why, because of all these luscious harmonies. I will do what I did last week, because this does deserve an organ, and there's a, a wonderful set of pedal tones and suspensions that I will do in the left hand. Let's do it one more time, now that you know it. And listen carefully, because this was meant, this was chosen for its beauty, but it does, the text does uh, align with this. It is not originally set to this text, of course, being a Christian hymn, um, but I love the text here that fits with um, the goal of what dreams are and to, for a better tomorrow. I'm just gonna play the tale. Oh. I'm sorry, I usually, um, I, I because I sing, I drink so much water, and I usually go to the bathroom during the sermon. I didn't want to, it was so, I, was, I wanted to hear the story. I was like, all right, if I go, quick. I said to myself, I said, <laughs> I was like, no, you've got, if you go right now and come back, and I was shocked that I, I was very shocked. I usually, I figured I would have the time, and I can't remember. glad we sang it twice. You sang so beautifully just now. You know, you sing beautifully. Even some days when our choir can't be, much of our choir can't be here, you sing beautifully. Thank you. I get to be in front of you and hear you, so that was pretty awesome. Take your dreams and take their questions. Take them in your heart. 
with you to your friends, to your community, share deeply, and know that all this comes to draw us together and to make this larger world around us a place of love and peace. Be those beacons this world needs. Go in peace, be in peace. We'll be together again. Maybe even this afternoon at 1230. <laughs>